share the screen. Excuse me one moment. Let's see if this works. Okay, can everyone see this? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, great. So I am gonna go on mute. Let's see if this is gonna work. Let me start with this. Please give me a thumbs up if you can hear it while I'm on mute. It's probably quiet at the beginning. Mystic fame. I am the mystic fame, which the hand of omnipotence hath reared. I am the lamp which the finger. to shine with deathless splendor. One. I am the one whose name 
Verily, I am the gate of God, and I give you to drink by the leave of God, the sovereign truth of the crystal pure waters of his revelation, which are gushing out from the incorruptible fountain situate upon the holy mount. And those who earnestly strive after God, let them then strive to attain this gate. Verily, God is potent over all things. Out of utter nothingness, O great and omnipotent master, thou hast, through the celestial potency of thy might, brought me forth and raised me up to proclaim this revelation. I have made none other but thee my trust. I have clung to no will but thy will. Thou art, in truth, the all-sufficing, and behind thee standeth the true God, he who overshadoweth all things. Indeed, sufficient unto me is God, the exalted, the powerful, the sustainer. The May 23rd, 1844, signalizes the commencement of the most turbulent period of the heroic age of the Baha'i era, an age which marks the opening of the most glorious epoch and the greatest cycle which the spiritual history of mankind has yet witnessed. No more than a span of nine short years marks the duration of this most spectacular, this most tragic, this most eventful period of the first Baha'i century. 
it was ushered in by the birth of a revelation whose bearer posterity will acclaim as the point round whom the realities of the prophets and messengers revolve and terminated with the first stirrings of a still more potent revelation whose day Baha'u'llah himself affirms every pop prophet hath announced for which the souls of every divine messenger hath thirsted and through which God hath proved the hearts of the entire company of his messengers and prophets. The opening scene of the initial act of this great drama was laid in the upper chamber of a modest residence of the son of a mercer in Shiraz in an obscure corner of that city. The time was the hour before sunset on the 22nd day of May, 1844. The participants were the Bab, a 25 year old Sayyid of pure and holy lineage and the young Mullah Hussein, the first to believe in him. Their meeting immediately before that interview seemed to be purely fortuitous. The interview itself was protracted till the hour of dawn. The host remained closeted alone with his guest, nor was the sleeping city remotely aware of the import of the conversation they held with each other. No record has passed to posterity of that unique night, save the fragmentary but highly illuminating account that fell from the lips of Mullah Hussein. I sat spellbound by his utterance, oblivious of time and of those who awaited me. He himself has testified after describing the nature of the questions he had put to this, his host and the conclusive replies he had received from him. Replies which had established beyond the shadow of a doubt the validity of his claim to be the promised Diane. Suddenly, the call of the Mu'a Hadin, summoning the faithful to their morning prayer, awakened me from a state of ecstasy into which I seemed to have fallen. All the delights, all the ineffable glories, which the Almighty has recounted in his book as the priceless possessions of the people of paradise, these I seemed to be experiencing that night. Methinks I was in a place of which it could be truly said. Therein no toil shall reach us, and therein no weariness shall touch us. No vain discourse shall they hear therein, nor any falsehood, but only the cry, peace, peace. Their cry therein shall be, glory to thee, O God and their salutation therein peace, and the close of their cry, praise be to God, Lord of all creatures. Sleep had departed from me that night. I was enthralled by the music of that voice which rose and fell as he chanted, now swelling forth as he revealed verses of the Qayyamul Asma, again acquiring ethereal, subtle harmonies as he uttered the prayers he was revealing. At the end of each invocation, he would repeat this verse. Far from the glory of thy Lord, the all-glorious, be that which his creatures affirm of him, and peace be upon his messengers, and praise be to God, the Lord of all beings. This revelation, Mullah Hussein has further testified so suddenly and impetuously trust thrust upon me came as a thunderbolt which for a time seemed to have been numbed my faculties. I was blinded by its dazzling splendor and overwhelmed by its crushing force. Excitement, joy, awe, and wonder stirred the depths of my soul. Predominant among these emotions was a sense of gladness and strength, 
which seemed to have transfigured me. How feeble and impotent, how dejected and timid I had felt previously. Then I could neither write nor walk. So timulous were my hands and feet. Now, however, the knowledge of his revelation had galvanized my being. I felt possessed of such courage and power that were the world, all its peoples and its potentates to rise against me, I would alone and undaunted withstand their onslaught. The universe seemed but a handful of dust in my grasp. I seemed to be the voice of Gabriel personified, calling unto all mankind, awake, for lo, the morning light is broken. Arise, for his cause is made manifest. The portal of his grace is open wide. Enter therein, O peoples of the world. For he who is your promised one is come. A more significant light, however, is shed on this episode, marking the declaration of the mission of the Bob by the per perusal sorry, the perusal of that which, I'm sorry, of that first greatest and mightiest of all books in the Baha'i dispensation, the celebrated comment commentary of the Suri of Joseph, the first chapter of which we are assured proceeded in its entirety in the course of that night of nights from the pen of its divine revealer, the description of this episode by Mullah Hussein as well as the opening pages of that book, attest the magnitude and force of that weighty declaration. A claim to be no less than the mouthpiece of God himself, promised by the prophets of bygone ages, the assertion that he was at the same time the herald of one immeasurably greater than himself, the summons which he trumpeted forth to the kings and princes of the earth, the dire warnings directed to the chief magistrate of the realm, Muhammad Shah, the counsel imparted to Haji Mirza Akasi to fear God, and the peremptory command to abdicate his authority as grand vizier of the Shah and submit to the one who is the inheritor of the earth and all that is therein. The challenge issued to the rulers of the world proclaiming the self-sufficiency of his cause. A claim to be no less than the mouthpiece of God himself, promised by the prophets of bygone ages. The assertion that he was at the same time the herald of one immeasurably greater than himself. The summons which he trumpeted forth to the kings and princes of earth the dire warnings directed to the chief magistrate of the realm, Muhammad Shah, the counsel imparted to Haji Mirza Agassi to fear God, and the peremptory command to abdicate his authority as Grand Vizier of the Shah, and submit to the one who is the inheritor of the earth and all that is therein. The challenge issued to the rulers of the world proclaiming the self-sufficiency of his cause. denouncing the vanity of their ephemeral power and calling upon them to lay aside one and all their dominion and deliver his message to lands in both the East and the West. These constitute the dominant features of that initial contact that mark the birth and fix the date of the inception of the most glorious era in the spiritual life of mankind. With this historic declaration, the dawn of an age that signalizes the consummation of all ages had broken. The first impulse of a momentous revelation had been communicated to the one, but for whom, according to the testimony of the Kitabiagan, God would not have been established upon the seat of his mercy, nor ascended the throne of eternal glory. 
she'll get in God passes by. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Sultan al Wa Malika man fil arz wa sama Ashhadu anna bika zaharat Sultanatullah al-Aqtidar Wa azamatullah wa kibriya بکاش رقاد شمو سلغ دام فی سماع الغزا و تلا جمال الغایب آنو فوق البدو و اشهد و نه به حرکت من قلم زهرا حکم الكاف و نون و برزا سر الله المكنون و بدعت الممكنات و بعثت زهورات و اشهد انا بجمال زهرا جمال المعبود و به وجه که الله وجه المقصود و به کلمت من اندکه فصلا بین الممکنات و ساد المخلصون Fa 
Dear friends, that is the conclusion of the prepared program. If anyone would like to say any prayers at this point, please feel free to do so. May I have a please, please. Thank you. Hobal, Hodaya, Mauzaifim, Toka Vikon, Mona Downim, Todana Farma, Hodaya, Fabirim, Ganao Yamalakut, Hide, Hodaya, Mordim, Hayat Sarmadibach. خدایا و زلت محسیم در ملکوت عزیز فرما اگر تایده و تاسمانی شامل گردد هر یک از ما ستاره درخشنده گردد و لا از خاک پس در شود خدایا تایید کن نصرت فرما ما را غالب بر نفس و هوا کن و از عالم طبیعت نجات ده خدایا به نفسات روح القدس زنده فرما تا به خدمت تو قیام نماییم و به عبادت تو مشغول گردیم و با نهایت صدق و صفا به انتشار آثار ملکوتت پردازیم توی مختدر و توانا و توی بخشنده و مهربان این این Thank you, dear friends. Happy declaration of the Bab. Happy birthday to Abdul Baha. Thank you for being here tonight. Please feel free to unmute and be with friends or if you feel your heart is full and you need to leave and meditate or have some cake and coffee, that's okay too. Much love to you all.